Welcome to part two of the intermediate Revit course where we'll start modeling in the outdoor pool area. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. If we have a look at the site plan, you can see that there's a pool and a pavement area around here. I'm gonna bring up a photo to have a better look at this, but you can see that there's a pool and there's this pavement around where there's a fence and gate. And that's clearly displayed on this plan so we can kind of go off of what is here. So I wanna model in this swimming pool and the pavement. And to do that, the best way is going to be using a building pad to create the pavement that runs along the side of the building here and comes up around the pool. And then we're going to split the building pad and put in this swimming pool. So let's start off in the 3D view and swing around to where that pool would be. As you can see, I have lined up the reference image from Google Earth and scaled it to the correct position in the site plan. And I've also done that for the ground floor plan as well. But I'm gonna to go to the 3D view. And from here, we can select the topography. Now, we're going to go to massing and site and create a building pad for this. Once we've selected that, we can go back to our site plan and we can draw in the building pad of where this pavement is going to be. Now, I'm gonna have a quick look at the reference images and you can see that this pavement, there's a pad that comes up around the swimming pool but then there's also pavement that comes around and then also up some stairs and around the side of the building. So let's do this first building pad here around the swimming pool. So to do that, I'm going to just reference this image. It can be a bit difficult to see considering that there are trees in the way and it's really blurry as well, but disregard that, we're going to give this our best shot. So I'm going to use the line tool once we've got our building pad selected and we're just going to draw this shape. Now it doesn't look like a straight line, so I'm just going to do this in two shots and I think it goes straight up to the end of the building here or the start of this building on the side that's a neighbor's building now this line looks like it could be straight across like this and then this is going to connect back to the start so it's a bit of an odd shape but that's what we've got what we're also going to want to do is cut out the swimming pool because this is just going to be for the pavement so we're just going to create another line that showcases this pool and as you can see, that might be a bit close. I'm pretty sure that fence is actually further back from the pool. It might be about a meter or two. But we're just gonna draw around this and try and get this as best as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just so that when we go to represent the model in Enscape, we're gonna be doing some renders. This is just to make it look good. It doesn't have to be technically correct because it's a swimming pool, it's not a piece of architecture. So I'm just going to adjust some of these lines. I'm going to pull this line out uh, quite a bit more as well as some of these lines across here. I feel like that might go back a bit more like this. All right, so once we accept this, you're going to see that we've got a building pad now, you know, surrounding the pool area. To change the material of this, because at the moment it's just going to be a generic building pad, we're going to have to go and edit the type. But now remember, if we change this and all the settings for this, our other building pads, which have been used on the building, they're going to be changed as well. So we want to duplicate this first and call this pavement. We're going to edit the structure of it and we're going to change the material to be a paver. We're going to have a look for pave and this here looks pretty good, but we might have to make some edits to it, but I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to add this material to the document by pressing that little arrow there. Looks like these tiles might be a bit small, but we can apply that and hit OK and we can have a look at what this looks like inside of Enscape. So I'm just going to go ahead and load up Enscape by pressing the start button here. And this is what I mean by using Enscape as a design tool. It's not just a rendering software. It's actually really good to be able to have a look at your design and see what it looks like in a human's perspective. Now let's go down. I'm going to double click down here to fly to it. I'm going to press space bar and fly around this model. There you go. As you can see, the tiles are extremely small considering that these pavers are a lot bigger. They are kind of diagonal, uh, what do you call them, diamonds. So I'm going to have to make some edits to that material. I'm going to keep Enscape up. It can slow down your modeling process, but while our model is pretty, pretty small and there's not much going on, it won't hurt to keep Enscape up because it's just going to update in the background and it shouldn't slow anything down if your computer is pretty fast. And we're going to edit this material, we're going to go to appearance, and we're going to hit on image here. So what we're looking to do is change the scale of this image and we can do that by going down to scale 
And we're going to make these a little bit bigger. In fact, probably about 600 millimeters both ways. So it's going to be a 600 millimeter square. From this image here, one tile is actually about 300 millimeters and two tiles are 600. So we might even make this a bit bigger. We want each tile to be about 600 millimeters uh, wide and uh, in length. Let's go ahead and apply this and see how it looks. And since we still got Enscape open, it should update in real time. There we go. And that looks much better. I'm actually pretty happy with that. We can rotate these tiles if we want to as well by using this rotation tool here. And we can just drag this if we want. And we're going to give it just a slight angle so it's kind of uh, like a diamond rather than a square. In fact, we can just change this to be 145. 130 is what I meant. That looks a lot better. I'm trying to look at the image over here and you can see they're di they are diamonds. And these are diamonds. They could even be a little bit bigger, but I'm not going to get too carried away with that. I think that looks pretty good. So let's model in this actual pool. We're going to have to create a slab which has water as its material. Enscape's quite good because it uses the Revit materials, but then makes them look really, really good. So if you have a water texture from Revit, it's going to automatically give it some animation and make it look really nice. And you'll see what I mean by that in a second. If we go to the architecture tab, I'm in my site plan view. I'm going to go down to floor, floor architectural, and then I'm going to draw in this pool. I'm going to do that by using the pick line tool because we've already got it here. We don't need to draw it up again. We can just snap to all of these lines, make sure it's all connected. And then we're going to hit the green tick. Now we might have to make some adjustments to this. We want it to be a little bit lower than the actual pavement because that's how pools work. I'm going to offset this height by 600. That might even be a little bit too much. Then we go 200 and we're going to edit the type of this floor because we want it to be water and we want it to be a bit thicker than 150 as well. So we're going to duplicate this. We're going to call it pool. We're going to change the structure of it. We're going to make this, let's say 600 millimeters thick, or maybe we'll go 400 thick and let's change the material to a water and you can see there's one here we can assign this to our document and click ok click ok click ok again and let's see what this looks like inside of Enscape there we go you can see it's got some animation to it you can see that there's still white showing as the topography is cutting through it so we need to find a way to cut this topography and not cut through the building pad so what we can do is create another building pad and we're going to put this over the top of the pool, but we're going to make it much uh, deeper than what the current building pad is. So I'm just going to draw around this pool again, click the green tick. And you're going to see that this is going to be in line with the current pad, which is not what we want. We want to lower this maybe two meters. And let's have a look at what this looks like. You can see that that is a lot deeper now. If we go to Enscape, there we go. We've got a much deeper pool and that looks pretty damn good so let's create a fence for it as well i'm going to go back to the site uh, view and what we want to do is create a railing that goes around this pavement to do that i'm going to go to architecture railing i'm going to sketch a path and now i'm just going to use the pick line tool to create this railing now before we click ok we want to change some of these settings at the moment there's an 1100 millimeter railing so it's 1100 millimeters tall we edit the type of this and we change the height of it if we have a look at the reference image you can see that it's pretty damn tall that window there we, we knew that that was maybe like 2100 i'd say that this railing is maybe 16 or 1700 tall so let's put this in as 1650 now remember before you make this change you're going to want to duplicate it and call this 1650 millimeters that way it doesn't change any other railings we've got Let's click OK, click OK, have a look in a 3D view. That looks pretty good. There are some changes we could do. As you can see that the, the top rail was actually lower than some of these um, balusters or some of these posts, I guess you could say some of these rails. So to make that change, it's really simple. What I'm going to do is edit the type again. We're going to edit the baluster placement and you can see that there's a top offset here for the top rail. So let's make this 200. And if we click apply, click apply again you can see that there's now a 200 millimeter offset that creates these spikes which is pretty good so the next thing we're going to detail up is this uh, pavement that goes along and around the building and around the pool looks like it stops around there's a rainwater tank here which we can also add in 
and it steps down maybe 200 mils from that building pad that we've already modeled up. As you can see, there's gonna be paving all across through here and around um, up until where there is lawn. You can see there's lawn here and we'll model that in as well. You can see where that gravel is and that might not be correct because we only just, uh, I guess, vaguely did that at the start. I'm going to measure across and see how far that is off of the actual wall. I'm just gonna use a wall to roughly see how much that is. So it's about 900 mils. Because we don't have any photos of that side of the building, it's probably longer than 900 mils. It looks like the roof overhang is about halfway between there. So there you can see it a bit better. You can probably count the pavers if we wanted to, but I'm going to say that's maybe two meters and then we'll add that in. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring this back. We can edit the boundary of it. And what we can do is actually measure off the wall. There we go. It's 844. I'm going to go ahead and make this 2000. And that should be perpendicular to that wall. And now it's two meters off. And that's probably not going to be 100% correct. As you can see, that only leaves a little bit for the driveway. And so we're going to have to edit this as well. You can see that this probably comes back to where that hedge is. So I'm actually just going to bring that back. That goes to, I would say, around about there. As you can see in the photo, there's a hedge wall here and then the fence. And so that's what is going on here. And that gives us a bit of extra room to play with for the driveway. And then that's the shed over here, which we can also model in. As you can see, there is a carport and a little storage room as well. So I might bring that back another 200 mils. So we're gonna go 1800. We can click that check mark and we can start to model in this other pavement. And we're gonna turn the topography on by pressing VV or VG. And then this will open up the visibility and graphic overrides for this site plan and we can turn topography back on if it's not showing for you. We'll go back to the modify tab and click that green tick. And now we've got something to snap to. But what we're gonna do, rather than creating a new building pad, we're going to find the building pad that we've already created. And we're just gonna edit the shape of that because it's the same height as this slab here. But I'm going to use some reference planes just to give us a guide as to where that actually is. And it looks like it would come out around about this way and this is going off memory as well. We're just creating some, some lines to estimate where that shed is. And so that would say that then the pavement is coming out from here and it's going up all the way into the pool. You can see that is in line just before the hedge there finishes. So that is just about this line here. So if we create a reference line again from about that point and bring that and snap it over, it looks like the pavement's gonna come all the way down to that point there. All right, so now we're gonna turn this image off again. We're gonna send this to the background and now we can start to edit in and draw in this pavement. So I've just clicked tab to select this pad. We're gonna edit the boundary again. This is gonna come across from this point and then it's gonna come down in line with the reference plane we've already made. Come across all the way over to this side of the building. In fact, I'm going to align this up over with the corner. So now we're just gonna use the trim and extend tool to trim these lines back. And we can delete some of these other lines as well. And once we accept this, it's gonna create the building pad, which is gonna have our pavement on it. There we go. And you can see it's not quite in line with the building, which we can edit. And that pavement as well is going to have to come over. We'll have a look at this in 3D. And that looks pretty good. And what we can do as well is have a look at this in our Enscape view. And so from what I remember, that looks pretty good. I remember there being a pretty decent amount of space between the games room. You can see that there's something going on with this material. We're going to play around with that a bit later. We also need to draw in this little step down as well that leads to the lawn. So if we go back to massing and site, we'll actually be able to create another pad for that. And if you remember, this was actually curved quite a bit. In fact, you can see that that curve starts from just before that shed or just after that shed. And you can see it comes around like that. And this is just gonna be a bit of an estimate because we can't exactly see it in the Google Earth image or in the site plan or the floor plan we've got. So I'm going to use a start end radius arc to finish this off. I'm going to select this point here and select the other point. And you can see that that's just going to fill in that gap with a curve. And now we just need to pick along these lines as well. 
to finish this off. So this is going to be using the same pad as before, the same material as well. It's just going to be offset maybe 250 mils because of that step down. And if we apply that, there we go. That's our pavement slightly stepped down, which is good. We can have a look at this in Enscape just to make sure. And as you can see, that material is not set on. We change this to pavement, then it should apply that material. There we go. We can also add in those steps around the side of the building as well. From what I remember, there were a few step ups. There was like one here and then it stepped up again, slightly down there where the laundry was. As you can see, we want to make it up to level one, which is this door here. And so we need to calculate what's that height difference from that bottom point to here. And we'll need to add in those steps. And as you can see, we need to fix up this side as well. And what we're going to do is create a section from this side of the building. And we're just going to calculate the height from there to this laundry point. So let's go to the ground floor view. And we're going to hit the section button at the top here. And we're going to create that section coming down this side of the building. And it's going to be facing that way. So currently you can see that the pad is on the ground floor. This door, we have to find out where this is sitting. This is sitting on level one as well with a sill height of zero. So the distance between these are just the distance between the levels. And if we go to a section, we can see that the ground floor is on zero, level one is 1400. So that step up is going to be 1400. And in this case, we're gonna say they're pretty big steps, but we're gonna say they're 350 mils. And so we're going to need four stairs then. So the first one will be at the corner here. And so we can put in a pad for here. Then there's gonna be another one and another one and another one where the door starts. So let's go back to the site view. The first slab is gonna come down here and we can use a building pad for this as well. And we will just adjust the heights. We're gonna draw this in from this point to the side of the wall. So I'm going to select the last point of this that we've just created. We're going to adjust the temporary dimension to snap onto the first point as well. And we're going to make this 4,000. We have a look at the edit type and look at the structure. This is 300 mils thick. I'm going to duplicate this and make uh, this one pavement, but make it 350 millimeters thick because that's the thickness of the stairs. So let's edit the structure, make this 350 mils, click OK, and we'll make sure the height offset is 350. We'll click the tick. So there you can see it's a pretty big step up being 350 mils, but that's the only way we can do it by having four step ups, which is what I believe it was. And you can see it doesn't quite reach the side of the wall, so we'll have to move that over. And this door might have to come up a bit as well. This will come up 350 mils from the sill, this building's pad will come over. So if we edit the boundary, we can just align it to that wall using the align tool. We'll select that wall and bring that over. And now we'll need a couple more of them coming up to this door. So there we have it. You can see that those pavement steps are in. It looks a little bit janky, but for the most part, that's how it should be. So we're going to keep it like that. This can probably come over to the edge of the wall. So let's align that up with the align tool. And if we have a look at this in Enscape, we can see what that looks like. And again, we're going to need to change the material of the pad. And so if we select one of these, go edit type, we can duplicate it to be, actually, we don't need to duplicate it because it's already been duplicated. We just need to change the material of it to be that same tile as before. So we'll accept all of that, accept all of that, see the changes. There we go. So yeah, you can see that pretty big steps and some of these were double steps, um, but that gives us access to the laundry then, which allows you to walk inside. Definitely need to fix that because that's giving me a seizure. Um, so let's actually fix that now before it does give anyone a seizure. So we're going to have to look at what's overlapping with what. So we're going to go back to Revit and you can see it's doing it in here as well. It looks like it might be that topography. So I've just deleted that topography. We're going to see if that causes any errors, but that looks like what we needed to do. Have a look in Enscape. That looks much, much better. Next up, we can create a quick model of the shed that's meant to go in that corner. So if we go to the site plan, you can see that we've already placed this reference lines or these reference planes. So let's just create some walls and then put a roof on that and call it a day. Now, usually you'd have a building pad under this as well. So we should probably do that as well. So let's go to the site and we'll create a building pad for this. So if we go back to massing and site, building pad, 
we'll just draw that in. And the height offset is just going to be zero. That's fine. In the next lesson, we're going to go over the five best sites for sourcing and downloading Revit families. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.